In order to understand the idea of electron configurations, we're going to start with a little bit of an analogy that hopefully will make some more sense to you. I want you to consider a kind of an imaginary high school building. This is, uh, well, well, we'll call this atomic high school, okay? Um, it has some things in common with a normal high school building. It has floors, first floor, second floor, third floor. It has classrooms on those floors. It has desks in the classrooms. And there are students that go to this high school and sit in those desks. But there are some rather interesting things about this high school that you should be aware of. Um, we're going to take a look at sort of a cross-section of what this building looks like so that you can kind of understand a little bit about how, how weird and, and strange it is. Uh, we'll start on the first floor. Now the first floor is just a regular old first floor. It's closest to the ground and uh, there's one classroom on the first floor and it's designated by the it's called room 1s and like most buildings rooms on the first floor start with a one so that's why it's called room 1s the s will become important later that's all there is on the first floor now in room 1s there's one desk and we'll talk more about the desks in a little bit but uh, only one desk in that room now directly upstairs from room 1s is room 2s it looks exactly like room 1s in every way the only way it's different is that it's a little further off the ground it's higher up but every, otherwise, everything's the same. It also has one desk in there. Now, further down the hall, we have room 2P. And this hallway is a little strange on the second floor. You'll notice there's this little ramp here. Um, if you've been in the main building on the second floor of Edgewood, you know this ramp very well. If you're standing in front of campus ministry, and somebody else is standing down in front of Mr. D's room, you're actually higher off the ground than they are, even though you're both on the second floor, because of that little ramp that goes up to campus ministry. Well, this is the same sort of thing. We have this little ramp that, uh, that goes up from room 2S up to 2P. They're both on the second floor, but uh, room 2P is just a little bit higher up off the ground than room 2S. The third floor has something similar going on. Directly above rooms 1S and 2S is room 3S. It's exactly like room 1S and room 2S in every way, except it's further off the ground. We also have room 3P directly above room 2P. There's also this other little ramp on the third floor. And so we have the same situation going on there. And then further down the hall on the third floor, way up this very high ramp, is a room called room 3D. Everything sort of jumps out at you in that room. But there's this very, very tall ramp on the third floor. Now all these rooms, 3S, 3P, and 3D, they're all on the same floor. But because of the weird construction of the hallway, three, room 3D is very, very high off the ground compared to the other two. It's almost like it's on its own, its own floor, but it's not. They're all on the third floor. Now the fourth floor looks very similar to this. We have room 4S, which is upstairs from room 3S. It's identical in every way to those. Again, one desk in there, and we'll talk about the desks in a second. We also have room 4P. At the top of the very, very tall ramp was room 4D. You can't really see it on this slide. And then there's a fourth room on the fourth floor at the top of a very, very steep ramp called room 4F. Very, very high up there. Now, what's interesting about this we have the fifth floor, we've got room 5S, you can see the little bottom part of 5P there. What's interesting about this construction, and what's very important to note, is that room 4S is actually lower than room 3D. It's actually a little closer to the ground than room 3D, even though it's on the next floor up. Even though it's upstairs, technically, from 3D, it's actually below it. See where that red line is? And that's really, really important. As you get to the fourth floor, things start to get all weird as far as how far off the ground these rooms are. And that's going to be very important later on when we start to look at how the electrons are arranged in their orbitals. For now, it's just a weird school building. And technically, you can be in room 4S and actually be closer to the ground than the students in room 3D. Very, very odd stuff. Now, let's talk a little bit about 
uh, the desks in these rooms. Now these desks are very strange desks. They're, they're called partner desks. And uh, as you can see, we've got two people that can sit at each desk. There's some rules. The most number of students that can sit at a desk is two. They're called partner desks. And the interesting thing about these partner desks is that it looks as though these students are facing each other, and they are. But that also means that they're facing opposite directions. Uh, this woman here is facing towards your right, and the, uh, the guy in the white shirt, he's facing to the left. They're facing in opposite directions. Not a coincidence, not a minor detail. It's actually very important that you understand that the students are going to sit two to a desk, and they're going to face in opposite directions. Now, the number of desks in the room varies depending on what type of room it is. And I've already told you that in rooms 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S, all the rooms that have S, uh, they have one desk, which means there's two students in there. Uh, the rooms that have a P in their name, room 2P, 3P, 4P, 5P, etc., those have three desks. And those three desks are identical in every way except in how they're oriented in the room. So you've got one desk that's pretty much like the one in the picture there. It's You're looking at, it, at, at the side of it. You've got another desk that's sort of perpendicular to that. And you've got a third desk, and that third desk sort of up on the wall. You don't want to be sitting in that desk. It's kind of a weird place to be. But it is perpendicular to the other two. In a room with three desks, that's how they're arranged. But the important thing is that they're identical in every way except for how they're positioned. Okay, so let's summarize a little bit. If the room has an S in its name, it has one desk, and that means two students can fit in that, in that room. If the room has a P in its name, it has three desks. The desks are identical in every way except for their positioning. And since two students can sit at a desk, that means that there are six students that can be in any room that has a P in its name. If the room has a D in its name, then there are five desks in there, five identical desks except for their positioning. And that means that 10 students can fit into that room because it's two students per desk. And finally, if the room has an F in it, there are going to be seven desks in there, identical in every way except for positioning. And that means 14 students can fit in there. Now, there are some rules for the students when they come to school every day. The rules are as follows. The students get to school they have to go into the first available room that's closest to the ground. So we fill this building from the ground up. And remember, just because you're on the fourth floor doesn't necessarily mean you're higher up than one of the rooms on the third floor. Remember, there's that weird kind of thing where room 3D is very, very high off the ground and room 4S is just a little bit lower, which means if we're going to be filling, filling these rooms up from the ground up, 4S is going to get filled before 3D, and that's really, really important. They can't go to the next room until the room that they're looking at is full. Once a room is full, the students move on down the hall, perhaps, or upstairs. They go to the next highest room. The second rule is that there are only two students to a desk, and if there are students, two students in that desk, they have to face in opposite directions. They've got to be facing each other. You can't put the chairs on the same side of the desk so that they can sit next to each other. I don't care if they're dating or not. They can't sit next to each other. They have to face each other, opposite directions. It's not my rules. It's just the way the school is. And the final rule is this. If a student walks into a room and there's more than one desk in a room, so either a room that has a P, a D, or an F in its name, there's going to be more than one desk in there. Uh, the students have to sit by themselves first. They can't sit with a friend until there are no empty desks left. So they have to first sit by themselves, and then once there is at least one student at each desk, then they can pair up. So weird rules, but important. Now, recapping a little bit. Here's our weird schematic of our room, of our, of our uh, school building. And in room 1, because it's an S, uh, we can fit two students. There's only one desk in there, so a maximum of two students. And that's all. That's the only. That's the, the largest number of students that can fit on the first floor. Two students. That that's it. The third student who comes to school has to go upstairs to the second floor, and they're going to put two students in room 2S first. When that room is full, they can go down the hall to room 2P, and they can fit six students in there because there are three desks. And then that's it. Then the the floor is full. Eight students total can fit on the second floor. 
the ninth student, well, the, the eleventh student rather, that comes to school, he's going to have to go or she's going to have to go upstairs to the third floor into room 3S. We can put, fit two students in there. And once that room is full, they've got to go down the hall to room 3P. And then when that room is full, they're going to have to go to room 4S because 4S is actually lower to the ground, closer to the ground than 3D. Then they'll go and fill up 3D with 10 students, 4S with 2 students, 4P with 6 students, and so on and so forth. Now remember that on the fourth floor, there's not only room 4S, 4P, there's also 4D, very, very high up above room 3D, and then there's a really, really high ramp 4F. Now you've got 2 students in 4S, 6 students in 4P, you've got 10 students in 4D, and you have 14 students in room 4F. So that's a total of 32 students. Every floor above that, 5, 6, 7, all have 32 students. And that's the maximum number of students that can fit in there. Okay? So, I want you to get familiar with this model. Rewind the video, watch it again, pause it, take some notes but get very familiar with a few things in this video that we've talked about because we're going to change some of the words in the next part and make this all about electrons.